Hello, welcome to Why Wait Till Sunday. I'm your host, Alfred, and this is a special presentation of a live stream. We are going to review uh, Isaiah McCoy and the rest of the Kent State offense against their game or in their game against Eastern Michigan in 2020. Now, Isaiah McCoy is a uh, really nice looking receiver. He's six foot three, about 200 pounds listed. And, um, you know, we haven't heard much from him since the max season ended and it ended kind of early. I believe he opted out of the bowl game. So he did not play since, I don't know, you know, uh, November probably. But this is a guy who who broke out as a true sophomore. He then dominated yet again as a junior uh, and then declared for the NFL. So he's a rare, uh, you know, three year early declare player going into the NFL from a G5 conference. Um, so we really need to pay attention to him. I think other guys have done things like that are Devonte Adams, who played for redshirted and then played two years and jumped to the NFL out of a G5 team. Um, and then there are some others, but you know, the fact that he made the jump means either he got a very positive review from the NFL draft council or whatever. Uh, I can't imagine he would have made a declaration to go to the NFL, uh, you know, outside of around three pick. It's certainly possible. He just wanted to get out of school. I mean, some people just don't love school. Some people, you know, would rather make any kind of paycheck over zero paycheck, but, uh, it stands to reason there's a good chance he actually got some positive information from the draft. <clears throat> um, I don't know, whoever recommends, you know, go to the draft or not. There's a whole group of people that do that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, he's very interesting. But also Kent State has some other really cool uh, people to talk about on their team, uh, more for like Debbie purposes. But, uh, you know, Dustin Crum is a really interesting quarterback. He's had an incredible uh, completion percentage yards per attempt over the last two years for Kent state. And then also, um, they have a Jashawn Polk who was a true freshman who got some run at wide receiver. And, uh, I think Marquez Cooper, we should see in the backfield as a true freshman who came in and immediately started, uh, playing for, um, for the golden flashes. Let me go ahead and retweet this out real quick. Uh, that's me retweeting it. You can see it right there so people can watch. Okay. So we are going to go then and get the game up. I'm going to share the screen. And we will, you know, I, I watched this game, uh, I think during a maxion, um, but, but I haven't watched it, you know, right now. This is kind of the first time going back and watching it. So we're going to learn together. Um, and uh, it should be a good a good time. So we're gonna mute that. And here we go. All right. So Isaiah McCoy is number twenty three, which is totally a badass number for a wide receiver. Um, unfortunately, I don't think he's gonna get to wear that in the um, you know NFL. But that would be awesome if he would. And so we've got our kickoff. And he returned to kickoff. So he, he's back there returning kickoff. So they think he's a dynamic player. I like that. Not too much going on there, but, you know, just the fact that he, I think he did it also as a sophomore. So I really like that early use in the uh, special teams because it shows these guys, they, you know, the coaching staff and everyone views them as one of their most dynamic players, want to get the ball in their hands. And that to me says a lot. So he's going to be down here, primarily plays in the outside, open up. And that's McCoy making a guy miss. That's a nice nifty little move. Didn't really get out of the, uh, you know, grasp there. But, you know, Crumb's going to look for him early and often. Crumb's number seven there. Um, we can't really see the route, unfortunately, but he catches it pretty good with his hands. We'll look again. Catches it pretty good with his hands. Pause it. You know, we're going to try to look at every play. There's only going to be, you know, maybe 10 catches. I don't even know if that many. But that's a hands catch. He's catching that with his hands. Uh, and there's some, you'd love to see, you know, him really rapidly turn it upfield. Look at all that green. I mean, he's got separation here. Uh, doesn't look like he does that. He does get past the first man. I guess there was someone trailing, Um, you know, there. Because he gets past the first guy, you'd man, it'd be nice if he could beat number six. 
how does number six close on him? I mean, that's kind of honestly a little disappointing because it wasn't a sharp turn up field. He kind of pushes him. So he gets to fade and number six is taking a good angle uh, and then does get a hand on, but he almost makes him miss too. So he's putting on some yards after the catch ability. Here's McCoy up here. And again, we're going right to McCoy, just, you know, target hog monster in this offense. You can see obviously he's lying up on the other side of the field here. So that's nice versatility. Uh, and you can always spot him in this game, at least. He's got those uh, two um, sweatbands on his, uh, his shin, basically, which um, we can always find him. So that's kind of nice. Makes things a little easier. This is 25. This is another one. I think that's actually Poke, uh, who was a true freshman. So he's getting some run. This was their first game of the year. So true freshman coming in. Uh, either Well, he might be a sophomore. Either way, he's a young guy uh, and getting some run early on in the season, early on in the game um but didn't do a whole lot with that just kind of ate up the green space that was uh in front of him so here's mccoy down here at the bottom of your screen uh looks like he's just running a go and nothing doing there didn't really get a whole lot of separation or anything like that he's pretty pretty thick there six three two hundred but kind of looks not that skinny i mean six three two hundred isn't massive you know the bmi there isn't humongous but uh he looks fairly thick there if you get to six three two ten by the you know the time they do whatever kind of weigh in for the nfl that would be nice got play action crumb now this is an interesting guy he definitely runs some read option for kent state uh you know certainly not flashy uh no pun intended but um, he does have some, you know, he has some running ability. I think he had like 700 yards in 2019. The shortened season this year threw the stats off a little bit, but he still, you know, routinely did carry the ball and he'll get little chunk gains. He's not Lamar Jackson by any stretch of the imagination, but, um, you know, can contribute, which is nice. And we're talking fantasy. I think for, you know, C2C leagues, this guy is going to be fantastic in 2021. Um, for Devi. It would need to be very deep, Devi. Uh, you know, probably a guy that you wait and see how the draft process shakes out. And if he gets any buzz and you take him in a rookie draft, in a Devi depleted rookie draft, something like that. Um, we can just go for it. We don't need to see the Eastern Michigan coach. Um, but uh, he's an interesting player. I really like him. I mean, some of his, uh, you look under the hood, some of his metrics, yards per attempt, completion percentage are very, very good. Looks like McCoy's not in here. Um and this is going to be, I think, Marquez Cooper. So here's a true freshman who basically started for them this year, uh, which is, you know, saying something in the COVID offseason, all that. This true freshman comes in and, uh, you know, basically was their leading uh, running back, catches some passes and stuff like that. So that's promising for his future as well. Um you know, showing some, uh, showing some, uh, power there, some contact balance, kind of, you know, getting extra yards after getting hit, uh, which is nice. Let's see, is McCoy back? He must be taking a break. Uh, I don't see those striped socks, uh, anymore. Fourth and 10. Crumb looks like they didn't do anything there, but we must've missed something here. I must not have been fourth and 10. You wouldn't do that for the 10. Uh, so I guess it's fourth and one. They got it. First down. Okay. And McCoy's down here at the bottom of your screen. Poke in motion. He's getting a, uh, so yeah, crumb here. Showing some strength there. You know, he's kind of, you know, I would say he's like poor man's Tebow. I mean, he's not, uh, he's not flashy with his running. He's not Kyler Murray or anything like that. He's more of a, like a, maybe a not as athletic Josh Allen. Um, maybe more like a fullback type, but he he's willing and he will do it. He'll pick up yards. Uh, so again, C2C, the golden flashes are going to run this offense and, uh, and it's pretty explosive and, and uh, they love to run the quarterback. So C2C startups target this guy late. He'll give you one awesome year uh, in the Mac. And then maybe is uh, maybe is an NFL prospect. That would have been a great play. Uh, Isaiah McCoy drops that unfortunate, there let's take a look at this so here we go now his throwing motion is not amazing um it's kind of awkward phil rivers made it work for so many years but he delivers balls 
you know, on target as noted by a near 70% completion percentage, uh, if I'm remembering correctly. So, you know, it's a little bit awkward, it's a little bit of a hitch, but it's not super slow. I mean, it's, it's a, somewhat, it's quick ish release. Um, it's not super slow release, it's not a huge wind up or anything like that. It could be quicker, but he kind of gets it out. I mean, that's right on the money too. This is a, this is a very bad drop. Um, really no excuse here for this to drop. Um, we'll watch it one more time, try to pause it then see where the ball is placed. But like, what do you want? The ball's here, hands out in front. He's got momentum headed towards the end zone. I mean, the ball is out in front of him right here. This is probably a touchdown. Uh, I know we watched this for Isaiah McCoy, but you know, that's a sweet pass by Dustin Crum right there. He doesn't, he doesn't throw many incompletions and this one really should have been a completion and probably should have been a touchdown. And he just loses concentration, I suppose. And that motion's not bad. We'll get a good, let's, you know, let's look at him because Dustin Crum is an interesting guy. I really like Dustin Crum. Uh, you know, I want to like him, I should say. I want him to be good. He's kind of a fun player. But coming out, you know, that's not that awkward of a throwing motion right there. And it's kind of quick. I mean, there wasn't that much of a wind up. Uh, let's look at it in slow mo. This is a nice, um, a nice view of his motion here. So he's got the ball is a little bit of a wind up, but not, he doesn't take it like back around, you know, and that ball is just boom right there. Um, love Isaiah McCoy, but that is not going to win him any, any brownie points. All right. Oh, let's go. Okay. Let's go third down. He's going to give and they don't get it. So we're going to kick a field goal, fourth and 10. Nope, we're going for it. All right. Pedal to the metal. Isaiah McCoy at the bottom of your screen. Uh, that looks like, yeah, Cooper, number 24. Uh, Poke, I think, is the slot guy right here. So those are all your relevant players we're trying to keep an eye on here. And McCoy, open, touchdown. Oh, and a little saucy there. But uh, we're going to see the whole route here, I believe, with another angle. And again, that, that pass is just put on an absolute dime, you know, towards the back of the end zone, you know, hands fully stretched out. But obviously, even if the coverage was better, no chance anybody else uh, is going to even get a hand on that ball. Oh, come on. We didn't get a replay. Are you kidding me? Maybe after the kick. Surely they're going to show that touchdown pass again. Sorry, I want to see that again. I know you do too. Um, okay, so he's at the bottom of the screen. It's just a go route. Um, he's uh, got some press coverage here. He doesn't really get a hand on him. So that DB's opened up and he's just got a full sprint here. It's going to be play action. And uh, he's already throwing the ball. He's basically, let's see. Um, he's basically even with him. He's even with him when the ball is being released by Crum. I mean, we can see him right here. He's got a step here. He's starting to separate. Crum's like, oh, jackpot. I know my guy. Isaiah is going gonna, is gonna to catch this touchdown. I'm going to come back to him. But you can see he was even, and now he's got a step. And then we lose him, but... He's maintained that. He's got a you know a full step. That's kind of NFL open. I don't know if that's Maction open because guys do run pretty free in the Mac. But this ball is just coming at such a beautiful angle. I mean, look at this. Even if the coverage is better, this is the pass you cannot get a hand on this pass. Um, so let's see it again in flash motion. It's just going, and he just beats him. You know, he's he's just beating him, but. I mean, that is just, even if this guy's here, because like, the way it was coming down, like you just can't get a hand on it. It's just beautiful pass uh, from Crum. You know, if you can put your, if you can put your passes there, uh, I don't think, you know, we're not going to have a problem even at any level of competition. 
Second down. All right, crumbs back on the fields. So we want to see catch all the Kent State stuff here. I must. I think that was fourth down. Stop. Okay. So we can get the ball back here. All right, McCoy down here. Crumb caught it. All right, they said he caught it. Not the greatest pass. I guess you could say he put it where no one else could catch it. Almost his receiver couldn't catch it, but, uh, you know, it counts. Kent State has a lot of receivers wearing numbers in the 20s. I don't know what's up with that. McCoy about on the screen. Hand it off to Cooper. Ooh, slippery. Slipped through that hole. It got real small in that hole. Whoa, look at the size of that guy. That defensive tackle is enormous. Holy cow. Look at this dude. Oh my gosh, 98 for Eastern Michigan is an absolute beast. All right, we got man in motion. McCoy's over here, kind of in the slot-ish now. So that's interesting. I like that he lines up in multiple places on the, uh, we've seen in both sides of the field. Now we're seeing some slot here. Oh gosh, Crum. And that one's on Crum. That's a touchdown. So we've had McCoy drop a touchdown. And we've had Crum overthrow a touchdown. That dude had no chance. Number 15. I guess he's like a, I don't know if he's a slot. He's either a safety or a corner. And he had room because he was not on press. And he just gets crushed. Not even close. That's Crum's fault for sure. All right. Second and 10. McCoy down at the bottom of your screen. Okay. Penalty. Let's see. Talk it out, guys. All right, McCoy. I think that's Cooper. He played most of the game. And they're gonna, gonna throw here. That's poke. 25. All right. He's tough, dude. He's getting some extra yards, fighting for every extra yard there. You know, coming out of the slot. Let's take a look at his route. I mean, why not? We're trying to do all these Kent State guys. Do we need to pay attention for next year? McCoy's guy we were looking at in the NFL. So he gets hit, but doesn't fall off his route too much. Still finds the zone and then gets some extra yards. Not bad for a young dude. There's McCoy down at the bottom of your screen. I mean, he's just, so he broke that one off short, caught a little out route. Kind of bobbles it a little bit, it looks like. Kind of a comeback out. Kind of bobbles it. Not crisp catch there. But catch the stat sheet. Cooper. Oh. Excuse me. I'm not that bored with this game, but you know, I have uh three little tykes that can wake me up at like 5 30 tomorrow morning. So maybe that's just catching up to me. Cooper again finding the hole, fighting for some extra yards. Look at this toughness. Just kind of bowling ball through that line there. Not going down on first contact. He's not a huge guy, if I remember. He's like 5'8", maybe 5'9". Um, but looking good there. Just keeping those legs churning. Boom. Just getting hit. Getting, you know, keep going. Keep going forward. Positive yardage. You got to like that. Out of the uh, true freshman, actually. Oh, there's Scott. Man, looks like he's okay, but he is enormous. All right, Cooper's in the goal line. Poke is in the slot, and McCoy outside X. That's how they like to do it. We're going to go, oh, pull, and Crumb gets in the end zone. Again, with a rush and a tough rush, getting some tough yards here. I mean, I don't know if he should have pulled it or not, but it worked. So Crumb got a little spin move there and got in the end zone. Again, I mean, he's kind of getting like short yardage chunks, but he's not going to razzle-dazzle anybody. Uh, let's see. Is this still defense? Ooh, Sean Lewis, youngest FBI coach at 34. Like KSU must be uh, Kennesaw State maybe. All right, Eastern Michigan's driving. And we don't really care that much about them for today's purposes. 
looks like a pick. So Kent State's going to get the ball back here. Kent State's a quality MAC team. I mean, I think they won the MAC going away. Um, and they're going to be pretty good again next year with Crum coming back. There's Poke again, you know, getting used early in the year, early in the first game. There's McCoy isolated out there. Crum's going to look his way. An out route comebacker makes one guy miss. And then, you know, meets a bunch of white shirts there. I don't think that was too incredible of a route or anything. You know, he, he's getting a lot of room to run. This is a running play here. Cooper squeezing through, getting some tough yardage. Haven't seen him do anything too remarkable, but just kind of getting those tough yards almost every time, rarely getting hit and knocked backwards. So that's good to see. Going in motion here. It's going to be presumably a pass play. A little screen to 14. I think his name is Cephas. Um yeah, some positive yards there. Poke is lined up behind him, so he's going to be down here. We got McCoy isolated up there one-on-one -on -one, because Kent State knows probably no one can guard him. All right. Oh, come on. Here we go. McCoy's down here. Little bubble screen. One guy miss. One guy miss. He's got some wiggle. He's got some wiggle after the catch. I wouldn't say he's like incredible. But he's got some moves. One there. Little little jab step there. Gets going north and south. He's got some moves. I mean, he's not. You know, I've definitely seen worse uh, from you know post catch moves and stuff. That's nice. That's a nice little move. You know, that'll play anywhere. All right, we got him at the top of your screen and Cooper down here and Poke. So that seems to be their, you know, Poke got starter snaps and he was playing most of of the games, uh, which I like going into next year. Keep an eye on him, at, you know, manning the slot there. Oh, crumb picked. What are you doing, man? I'm trying to highlight you here. I think he just didn't see that linebacker, you know, the classic going for McCoy and just didn't see that linebacker dropping back. That's a good play. I mean, McCoy's open, but I, he must just, he missed it. He thought it, maybe he thought he could like really rifle it in there. Let's take a look. Uh, let's see the route from McCoy, you know, cause we don't always get to see the full route. So he's all the way on the end. Oh, I forgot about the timeout. All right. Now we're going to go here. And so he's up here. What's he do to get? I mean, it's just going to be like a little uh, in. Probably not a sharpen. Well, that's not too bad. Pretty crisp, actually. Right here at the goal line cuts in. And that DB was definitely playing him inside. I mean, he's shifting inside, so and he still kind of gets a step on him, even though he's shuffling inside, inside, inside. He still kind of bursts and has a step. I would say the one thing he didn't do is really sell going out that much because he was cheating inside. I mean, his leverage is inside, 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 so he didn't really cheat at all. Um, to or you know, it didn't cause him, or he did cheat, and McCoy did not cause him to rethink that really at all. And it's picked. Sorry for all those Dustin Crumb stands like myself. It's disappointing. And we want to try to get to the next possession here. Oh, Cooper. I want to see what he did. Oh, geez. Must have been a snap over someone's head. Second and 21. Cooper goes in motion. McCoy must be at the bottom or he's not on the field. No, he's in the slot. Okay. They're going to do a go from the slot. That works very well. That's basically all Terrence Marshall did. Oh, boy. Penalty. That's nice for Kent State. Oh, face mask. So they get new life here. 
I'm going to give it to, is that Cooper number 24? Looks like it. Nothing super special there. And what's Crumb doing? You know, he's got kind of a fairly quick release, uh, which I like. And he's accurate. I mean, it's in the Mac, so take that with a grain of salt, of course. But yeah, he just kind of slings that thing. I kind of like that. Oh, punting. And that looked like a good catch. All right. Second and 13. Let's see. All right. Two minutes left in the third quarter. Kent State has not scored a ton. It's only 20 points at this at this point. Oh, we missed some Kent State goodness. All right, this must be the first down play coming off the kickoff. 20 to 15. This is a good game. Uh, they're keeping it in striking distance. Kent State's still ahead. McCoy down at the bottom of your screen. Handoff or, you know, play action. Again, tries to make someone move. Isn't super successful. But he's trying. I like that he's not just going down and getting tackled. He's always trying to make something happen at the catch. And, I mean, looking at his yardage totals, you know, he did more often than not, maybe not this game too much. But you can see he's not having to work very hard off the line. Uh, you know, they're giving him tons of room there to work with. Uh, so we haven't seen him have to beat someone, you know, really challenging him up at the line in this game at least. And we're going to hand off to Cooper. Not too much going on. And all oh, big play. Oh. Hmm. Where, what was, so this is McCoy down here. This is straight up go, basically. And I don't know, did he lose that in the lights? It kind of looks like he just misread that ball uh, completely there. And, um, I mean, Crum, it wasn't a great throw by Crum. Um, you know, it's kind of behind him. He was cutting in. So, honestly, I don't know, was he supposed to cut in? Because uh, he certainly came inside. He's running on the hash, and he started outside the hash. So was he supposed to drift in? Either way, that becomes a pretty difficult catch, uh, whether the throw or the route was a little bit off. I'm not sure. Because he's he starts – I mean, he starts out here. By the time he's the ball's to him, he's he's catching it. So I don't know. I mean, you know, was he supposed to drift that far inside? I'm not sure. Or was the throw just, you know, should have been more towards the middle of the field. Um, in any case, it wasn't a complete pass. It was really bad, actually. <clears throat> um, disappointing there. I mean, yeah, if he leads him, I mean, that's a huge play. All right, we're punting... Uh, let's see. We're going to get into the fourth quarter. We're coming to the end here. Third and six. What did we miss? All the plays. All right. So backed up near their goal line. They're going to give it to, that's, I think that's Cooper. Another running back. Didn't do a ton. Third and seven, third and six. And we're going to go to Cephas on a little screen. And he's open. Oh, is he gone? You got to get there. Oh, man. He does not have long speed. Put that in your scouting report. Jeez, boy, you want to be able to take that to the house. I mean, just he was ahead of everybody. I mean, he had no one even had an angle on him. And seven. Yeah, he doesn't have uh, breakaway speed. Number 14. Probably not an NFL guy. 
Oh no. Is there a penalty there? Oh. Oh no. Well. Again, it's not a bad pass, though. Running backwards, you know, getting hit, kind of. Guy in his face. Third and seven, we'll do it again. And incomplete through the hands of Poke. Also a little bit high, maybe. Flag. That's maxing for you, folks. You just never know what's going to happen. Uh, Eastern Michigan now comes down. They have scored. It's now 23-20, and Kent State is needing to drive here to win the game. So this is going to be a good finish. Hand the ball off. 11 minutes left. And McCoy's at the top of your screen. They hand it off to the running back who gets some gritty yards. And now we're going to – Dustin Crumb's going to run it. And I think he just does get the first. Oh, that was first down. I'm mixed up on my down and distance here. Got a penalty, very sloppy game. This was the first game of the season, you know, coming off COVID. So we can be a little bit lenient there. McCoy's at the top of your screen. Uh, Cooper here in the backfield, poke at the slot. And, well, let's just watch it. So, play action like always. Crumb standing back there. Tons of time. Flushed. Decides just to run. Nothing really happens. All right. Second and 22 with 10 minutes left. Trailing. You got to be a little nervous if you're a Kent State fan right now. And Cooper just goes forward. Gets what's blocked, basically. 10 yards. Hold on. Third and 10. Trailing by three. Little play action out of the shotgun. Crumb going way deep. And, oh, man. You'd like to see that completed. I think McCoy should have had that. I really do. I'm sure we'll get a replay on a big play like that. <laughs> we got a flag, of course. Show us the replay. Show us. We're going to have to just watch it live. Okay. How we get like a good angle? So here's McCoy at the top of your screen. He's running a really straight line, looks like. But he is very, very open. Uh, I mean, not only is he ahead, but he's also got, you know, yards separated in between there. Uh, and you really, I mean, I like McCoy. But let's be honest, you got to come down with this. You got to come down with this. You got to help your quarterback out. I mean, track it or something a little bit better. So you're not having to just dive there. But even if you have to dive, you just catch that ball. Uh, yeah, we're trying to be objective here. Let's do slow mo. I mean, it's a tough catch, but I don't know. Part of me thinks that was like track a little bit of a tracking problem uh, rather than a ball placement problem. But, you know, I'm not I'm not sure. Here we go. Oh, oh, we're way behind. I'm sorry. Here, second and 22. I don't know how I got that far behind. All right, here we go. So Crumb's going to release this thing. And I don't know, what do you think? Is this pass or is this ball tracking or is this hands, all of the above? I mean, it seems to me he's in a full sprint. I guess Crumb probably should have put it more on the outside. You would love to see him also come down with it. So a little bit of both. But Crumb probably should have put that more on the outside. I mean, he saw he had his guy. Um, come on. Open over there. So. All right. Let's just keep it going here. Well, that was. We had a flag. That's right. So here we go. First and 10. 
play or not play action. We're going to get it out to a little kind of a bubble screen there. But that was, I mean, honestly, look at that nice little quick snap release there too. Off the play action, just boom, fires it in there. You know, maybe I'm seeing something that's not there, but I like Crum. He's going to run here. Decent vision, finding some blockers, getting enough, getting the first down. He's not graceful, okay? Let's not confuse things, but he gets the job done. All right, here we go. I mean, he came from like a backup last year to like being thrust into action to then being like really pretty good, at least in the Mac. Uh, all right, that's to Cephas. Play action. He's going to try to run. Oh, get some just killed there. Eight minutes left. Clock's ticking. Backpedal. Cephas again. He comes up big here in the clutch. All right. Is that 98 again? Man, they have some big D tackles over there in Eastern Michigan. Um, and we've just got basically a draw. Cooper giving his uh, patented gritty runs there, getting a couple tough yards. McCoy at the top of your screen. And crumb pump fake. Oh, wide open. Love to see it. I guess that's like a tight end or something. I'm not even familiar who 85 is. All right, little pump fake. Someone bit on something because he was wide open. Pump fake and a nice little... Eh, he knew he had room, but yeah, otherwise that wasn't the greatest pass. You know, sometimes when the guy's so wide open, you kind of uh, short arm it occasionally, but gets the job done. Touchdown. 27-23. Kent State takes care of business on their side. And that might be the last possession. The second and seven here. Probably just going to get some Cooper runs at the end with four minutes left here. Still up 27-23. Come on, Bradford. All right, we're throwing Cephas. little turnaround. Yeah, no. Crumb gets that ball out quick. Just kind of rifles things in there. And this is probably... All right. Third and one. Surely we're running the ball here with Bradford. Gets the first. That should probably do it. Two, two minutes left now. We're just running the ball. Eastern Michigan knows it. Third and 11 with two minutes left, though. I You need to get the first down here. I don't think they're going to just, you know, kneel this, basically. Let's see. How can we go in the clutch? Cephas. Clutch. Not very fast, but clutch. They get the first. That's going to do it for this game. They love that. I feel like they're playing NCAA with, like, quick slant, you know, against zone or whatever and just, like, wide open. I think that's going to do it, folks. All right, ball game. Kent State wins. Stop the share. All right, well, that was fun. Um, you know, in in review here, I think McCoy showed some nice things, some deep speed, some length. He's six foot three. Uh, he caught that one really nice over the shoulder. He dropped a couple. Uh, could have been a much bigger game. Dropped one beautiful pass, probably would have been a um you know touchdown and then uh one was over his head would have been a touchdown that crumb overthrew and then talking about crumb i mean again you know for c2c it's a no-brainer i think he's gonna have another great year next year even with mccoy gone uh he adds rushing to the mix he's just a really nice player fun player um at least for c2c but i think there's some intrigue there um you know, otherwise, maybe he makes it onto an NFL roster. Maybe he's a decent backup that you can play in DFS or spot start occasionally. I mean, look at Tyler Heineke. If you can make a team, uh, you're good enough to be there. And unless you're Nate Peterman, you can maybe do some damage. 
uh, for Dynasty League. So, uh, you know, in Superflex Deep Dynasty, I would keep an eye on Dustin Crum. Listen to the buzz that happens next year as you're preparing for the draft. Uh, and then we can keep an eye on Jashon Polk. Looks like mostly a slot receiver. Uh, and then Marquez Cooper, anybody who comes in as a true freshman and leads a backfield is worth keeping an eye on. It looks like he was more of a tough runner, you know, maybe like a little bowling ball type dude. I'm not sure he is, um, uh, you know, true feature back. He's not very big. He didn't look like he had any kind of breakaway speed, but just kind of looked like a tough runner. Uh, and they lined him up outside and you know, he got some pass, uh, pass catches during the season. Uh, keep an eye on him. But the big story here, I think, is McCoy and Crum for uh, outside of the college rosters. I mean, think for the college rosters or for C2C, anybody on Kent State's worth having. They were explosive. They're going to be explosive again. Um, but uh, yeah, I like Isaiah McCoy. He's going to be, pff, he's probably going to go undrafted in, in most formats. Uh, super deep dynasty. I like him better than like, I would rather take a stab uh, on Isaiah McCoy than like Sage Surratt. So, I mean, if you want to start saying when, when you're in the Sage Surratt area of your draft, um, personally, I'd rather take a chance on a guy who, you know, left early um, and has shown some length, shown some ability to get deep. Uh, I think that the upside with McCoy is higher just because of the early declare. He dominated his wide receiver room. He dominated the work at Kent State. All those things look good, um, you know, versus Surratt, who's, you know, pretty old and didn't dominate till his third year in school. And so, you know, history tells us that ceiling is lower and I'd rather take a chance on Isaiah McCoy. Plus he wore number 23. That's totally badass. I wish they let him wear it in the NFL because that would be sweet. Um, anyway, this is AJ or Alfred, I should say, signing off of the live stream. I hope you enjoyed it. I've really liked doing these and we'll pop it up on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, until next time, we'll see you.